Welcome back, our kids. So we're back with another one. This may well end up being the final part into my investigation into Mr. Max Spears, Max Bates Spears. Um, I'm not sure yet. It depends. Um, his ex-partner who reached out to me, if she wants to come on the show, then we're going to make that happen and she can remain anonymous. Um, if that's not going to happen, then this could be the final part. And it's without a doubt the most wild part I've come across yet. Um, there's a, a bit of speculation in there. I mean, have a listen to what this lady says. Uh, use your own discernment, as I'd always advise, as I've advised from my first video onwards, really. Let me just screen the share and we'll get straight to it. All right. Okay. Right, we're just going to watch it on here like this, and here we go. Called before Max Spears, Hello, welcome Chris to Neal. today's show. Uh, this particular show is titled uh, Before Max Spears, There Was Chris Neal. There have been two deaths uh, that have come about uh, within the uh, truth media, the UFO uh, secret space program. Uh, super soldier MK ultra mind control uh, intelligence asset media, the media that talks about these things. There have been two deaths, and uh, the deaths have certain links and similarities uh, to them. And I want to uh, go into a comparison uh, with that with you. I'm going to start here because uh, most people are aware of. Spears uh, and Matt and what happened to Max Spears uh, became sensationalized. It went into the mainstream media. It's kind of like where our media blurred with their media. Now, one of the things that I find interesting when, when the mainstream media had decided to uh, talk about Max Spears, all of a sudden he became a UFO researcher. But those of us that had been uh, listening to Max Spears, watching uh, what he was saying, his interviews, uh, looking at what he posted on Facebook, we knew him as being uh, a super soldier and he was showcased uh, at a super soldier summit in 2012 that took place at Henderson, Nevada that had certain individuals that were there. It was kind of like when these guys uh, were launched. And I'm going to just treat this topic as if you don't know the topic that well, just really quickly, because I'm not sure who's exactly seen my videos. And at one point, at one point you're, you're viewing them, but the Super Soldier Program had something based on, it's called the 1st Battalion uh, military. Uh, there's a movie about it called The Men Who Stare at Goats, where the mil started, military started using um, psychic abilities and other types of things that you would consider to be new age and bending our reality. If you've not seen The Men Who Stare at Goats, go and watch that, man. It uh, gives a lot away if you're into this kind of stuff into warfare. Uh, this is based on a true story. Uh, it, it still exists today. And the people that are connected to it are people like Michael Aquino. So Max Spears uh, ended up having a suspicious death. And I want to read um, the latest. I always felt that if anybody had a reason to take Max Spears out, it was because of the fact that he was beginning to expose uh, the child pornography and the child trafficking uh, that is happening today. This is pre, to realize, Max was talking about these things before the WikiLeaks, before Pizzagate came out. And uh, I mean, just before, as a matter of fact, his death is uh, timely. It, he, he's within the same week or two that Seth Rich was murdered. All right, so conspiracy theorist, investigating U.S. military pedophile ring found dead. British conspiracy theorist and father of two, Max Spears, was found dead under suspicious circumstances just days after te texting his mom, if anything happens to me, investigate. In an interview just before his death in July, 
Spears said he was investigating a major occult-based pedophile ring within the U.S. military. His mother believes that he was murdered by his enemies. It is believed Spears, 39, uncovered some government secrets that were to remain secret. He traveled to Poland in July to give a talk on UFOs, government cover-ups, and conspiracy theories. Now, say that very loosely. I don't know if I'd specifically say it was UFOs or advanced aerial flood threats, as they're now known. Um, government cover-ups and conspiracy theories. There were certainly government cover-ups in there and methods of how to travel interdimensionally. Um, that's what I picked up on, but not a UFO as you'd think of it in a conventional sense, like a ship floating through the sky made of some form of precious metal. He was ruled to have died from natural causes despite no post-mortem. Friends claim he died in his Warsaw apartment after vomiting black liquid. His family believe his death was suspicious after the father of two reportedly sent his mother. Let's just make this clear. It wasn't his apartment in Warsaw. He traveled to Warsaw to deliver that last lecture. It was Monica's apartment. <laughs> Excuse me. Vanessa Bates, 63, a text message. Two days before he died, which said, your boy's in trouble. If anything happens to me, investigate. In a rambling interview with Polish YouTube channel, I can't pronounce that, but PTV, during which he appeared to slur and complained of being tired a number of times, Mr. Spears talked of all of his inquiries into the Presidio Child Development Center run by the US Army in San Francisco. A well documented a well documented scandal broke out in 1986 when allegations of suspected ritual abuse involving 60 children, including four children, had their had contracted an STD surface from the center. But despite so many victims, only one man, Gary Hambright, a civilian employee of the center and Baptist minister was charged on 10 counts of child abuse. And let's, you know, it's the first time I realized this, but he was a Baptist minister, which means that he was a Christian minister. It's interesting that the Christian minister was hung with the crime, but not the Satanists. The San Jose Mercury News reported in 1988 on claims that Lieutenant Michael Aquino, who was based at Presidio, and the self-confessed founder of satanic church called the Temple of Set was involved in the abuse, but despite a po po police inquiry, no charges were ever brought against him. Now that's extremely important. Remember that name, Michael Aquino. I pointed to it up here earlier, Michael Hemmingson. Okay, keep that in mind. The case against Mr. Hambright was also subsequently dropped after a judge ruled the allegations were too vague. But in April 1992, the American Journal of um, Orthopsychiatry published a report, the severity of the trauma for children presented by clear-cut symptoms. The report detailed how before the abuse was exposed, parents had noticed changes in their children, including vaginal discharge, genital soreness, rashes, fear of the dark, sleep disturbances, nightmares, sexual provocative language, and sexually inappropriate behavior. In the video of the interview recorded four days before Mr. Spears was found dead, he said he had feelings about bad things that had gone on at Presidio. He also spoke at, of having details on a number of underground tunnels. Here are the tunnels again. <laughs> In the video of the interview recorded four days before Mr. Spears was found dead, he said he had feelings about uh, bad feelings that had gone on Presidio. He also spoke of having details on a number of underground tunnels connecting preschools, kindergartens, and churches in San Francisco, which was linked to the Presidio scandal. This also is, is, is something that the children from, uh, you know, the Hampstead, uh, case with uh, Ricky Dearman. They also talk about, uh, you know, I don't, I, I think there's tunnels too, or they're, or they're being transported uh, to different areas. Mr. Spears also gave theories about Michael Aquino during the interviews. Devil worshiper holds sensitive army post 
and top brass say no problem. A senior U.S. military intelligence officer with a secret security clearance admits that he's also the founder and high priest of a satanic church. And amazingly, the Army says no problem. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino, a 41-year-old former Green Beret confirmed to the Inquirer that he'll, he's been involved in a devil worship for, for 22 years. He said he formed his satanic church uh, in the Temple of Scent in 1973. And this is just like an article here that I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing here, but there's a screenshot of uh, the uh, paper speaking about it. Okay, so there's a write-up in the paper. The interview asked Mr. Spears if he was scared to be talking about these subjects. He replied he was he was because he was exposing it. But during the one hour, 16 minute long interview, which had to be stopped midway through because Mr. Spears claimed he was being psychologically attacked by forces he was exposing, the conspiracy theorists discussed a bizarre range of theories. These included a deep underground water base between Dover and Calais being a secret base for reptilian creatures that have infiltrated the global elite. Mrs. Bates, believe, Mrs. Bates believes her son may have been killed as part of a government cover-up after an autopsy of his body failed to be performed. Mrs. Bates arranged for Mr. Spears' body to be flown back to Britain, where an autopsy was carried out. But two months later, she said, waiting for the results. She said, apparently, he had not suffered any obvious physical injuries he could have been slowly poisoned, which is why the results of a toxicology test from his postmortem are so important. Now, that's what makes sense the most to me, the poisoning. But did she get the toxicology um, report, you know, the postmortem? Did she get that? Did she read that? Was that ever unveiled to the public? Mr. Spears' online followers are also convinced he might have been killed for getting too close to the truth. A blogger for the website Project Camelot wrote, the entire circumstances are suspicious and I urge everyone to encourage the release of details about what really happened and call for an autopsy. A spokesperson for the Northeast Kent Coroner's Office said they were in very early stages of investigations. Okay, this is Chris Neal. Uh, Chris Neal uh, was uh, part, he, he was, a, a CIA MK Ultra asset whistleblower. Uh, apparently, it, it seems that, he, that according to how he writes and what I can tell from the background, he had a connection to Carrie Cassidy. Perhaps she interviewed him. Uh, Michael Hemmingson, Revolution Radio. He was one of the people that uh, were stepping forward and really kind of becoming a part of this uh super soldier or the coin the phrase super soldier that you know really who coined that phase phrase uh was carrie cassidy now that's massively important so she said carrie cassidy came up with the phrase super soldiers and so that would make the whole thing a fabrication but now i've been speaking to his ex-partner who's saying it's all fully legit so Hmm, keep an eye on this video. It's getting interesting. So this is Chris Neal, an apparent, another so super soldier. It's really hard to find pictures of Chris Neal now. And uh, I did find the picture by clicking onto a link that he had connected to one of the last blogs that he wrote uh, before he died. And in this blog, he is uh, exposing a person named Michael Hemmingson. Now, before I go any further, I want to show you uh, some clips from my last video that I uh, uploaded. And that was titled, uh, Carrie Cassidy Slanders uh, Stephen D. Kelly uh, to Hide the Truth About This. <laughs> Now, the last time we heard silliness like this came from Michael Hemmingson, who used to call himself former White Hat. Now, Michael Hemmingson and Kerry Cassidy are very, very closely connected in case. In fact, they're so closely connected that they're also involved in the death of another whistleblower. 
not carry. You're involved in the death of another whistleblower, along with Michael Hemmingson. Now, Michael Hemmingson challenged me at Revolution Radio and ended up losing his job. But not only that. All right, let's just pause it right there. That other whistleblower that they are talking about is Chris Neal, is this uh, the picture of this young, young man, the picture of the young man that I just showed you. Michael Hemmingson, A.K. former White Hat, was definitely on the payroll of Kerry Cassidy, Michael Aquino, and the Bilderbergers. All right, so on to uh, this next portion of of the of the show. Now, this is something that I think it's like twenty seven. All right, I'm going to put this part on. This is going to give you some background about what you're going to be watching today. And then he says. Kerry Cassidy was paying Hemmingson to do the whole white hat thing. And, and that's what Stephen is talking about in this video. He is um, calling her dirty. There was a young man that did die. Uh, they claimed it was a suicide, but there were strange threats coming from whom the young man thought was Michael Hemmingson spying on him, having intel. And let me just say again, uh, Michael Hemmingson did go to the Naval War College, which they, which they are, um, you know, they they're trained for psychological warfare, which is what Michael Aquino is uh, all about. This was uh, this was actually uh, Michael Hemmingson uh, on on air. This is Michael Hemmingson with the art of dreaming, dreaming on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. And it is Warp Co. Wednesday. Because on Warp Co. Wednesday, anything can happen. So on Warp Co. Wednesday, we'll have the art of dreaming and we'll have uh, Dr. Hemmingson's News of the Weird. And I believe I'll be joining Seth Michaels tonight on Second Foundation to talk about Alistair Crowley covering the stuff that I wasn't able to cover cover last week on Halloween when I was having uh, communications breakdown. And, and here's where I need to break in with the uh, Led Zeppelin song, Communications Breakdown. I don't know what it was. Something just didn't want me talking about Crowley down there when I was in Mexico, but the internet seemed to be freaky all over all over Mexico. I, uh, usually I'm able to broadcast fine out of, the, out of the Starbucks. There weren't a lot of people there to clog up the server, but uh, I couldn't get on and and then my headset broke. Um, so I go back to, to my place there where and, and uh, our wireless there was, was acting up and you know, my, my daughter was running around crying because she didn't like the mask for her, her Halloween costume. She went as a pumpkin. And uh, so so that sucks. My show on Crowley and, and, uh, and the Bay. I don't know how much did or did not come through. It wasn't good enough for the archives. So and, and and uh, Seth was was interested in it, so I, I believe tonight, or maybe it'll be the next night, we're going to talk about Crowley and Luciferianism and occultism uh, on Second Foundation. Perfect night. So, as I was saying, Lorian Fenton will be joining me in about 20 minutes, I believe, or some point in, in the show. We're going to be talking about black helicopters and uh, New World Order surveillance and super soldiers and some stuff like that. We'll probably be talking about the alchemy event coming up in a week and a half. Where... Okay, so <clears throat> it's kind of interesting that was happening. He, he mentions Halloween and everything, the timing of it all. He does mention the Irvine Alchemy event, and that's going to play out later on in this video, of the 2012 Alchemy event. That's how he kind of also, uh, Chris Neal tracks Michael Hemmingson. That's why he has, he put this video on his, on his website. Okay, in this clip, uh, you will see uh, Randy Moggins uh, writing to Ben Duchesne. And if you've been following my channel, you will know that Ben Duchesne has been exposing uh, some domains and subdomains that are linked between Carrie uh, Cassidy, Project Camelot. Uh, this particular blog that Michael Hemmingson was writing, uh, Confessions of a White Hat, uh, and uh, the Idlewild group, which according to Chris Neal and his last blog was 
actually created uh, by Michael Hemmingson. As a matter of fact, the link, the link to the Idlewild group gave me this particular photo. Like I said, the internet is pretty much scrubbing him off uh, the internet. It's hard to find a clear uh, picture of him anymore. I find that interesting. Um, <laughs> I have done several shows about Chris Neal. So I have footage with better, better visuals, but it's kind of, it, it even feels like almost like the internet is wanting to sweep this uh, uh, under the rug. It says, uh, yes, Hemmingson was his former white hat. This is Randy Moggins from Off Planet Radio writing this. Yes, Hemmingson was former White Hat. No, I don't think he's dead at all. That was a cover story to remove the asset from the field after Hemmingson was outed by Chris Neal. That is the young man that we're talking about that died that Stephen is actually making reference to as well. As FWH and the subsequent death by suicide of Chris, Hemmingson actually revealed who he was in a Cassidy interview as an intelligence asset. The various cover names, including Louis Conmin, were cover stories. He was also behind the white hats that Cassidy heavily promoted back around 2010-2011. My only direct contacts with Cassidy were were over her shilling for Richard C. Hoagland and later in 2011 her promotion of the FWH blog. I don't know if you just noticed Lewis Khan Nin is loose cannon <laughs> if you put them two together but you'll find that out further along down the rabbit hole. This is all documented in my old blog which is still all archived online uh, HTTP uh, semicolon forward slash forward slash, slash blog dot off planet media dot net question mark s equals former plus plus white plus hat. I am aware of the gaming of IP addresses. I actually have a significant database of records. I just still have no definitive proof, smoking gun, as to method and motivation. I don't know what to do about it, i.e. how to sanitize my own IP assets. This is a tech area outside of my expertise beyond fundamentals. This game is still running the recent death of Max Spears. Smells very suspicious given the same players are on the field. Just substitute James Casbolt, Michael Prince for Bill Brockbrader, Max Spears for Chris Neal, Cassidy Johnston, his his latest Christine Joanna Hart. It's a round robin of assets, fake and real. And then I want to show you a couple of other things. Uh, I want to. There's a channel that I discovered that I believe was actually uh, Chris Neal. So let me go to my history here. So this is him talking about the Ida Wild group, Chris Neal. He, I believe it's him who made this video. So former White Hat has responded to my two cents on Project Camelot, which he did last night and now he is again this afternoon. So when I click former White Hat, oh, look where we go, Louis Con Nin. Yeah, he's... Louis Khan Nin, as many people have said, but of course he says he's not. So let me do this for you one more time. Former White Hat, click. Oh, Louis Khan Nin. And uh, one last time here, former White Hat, click. Louis Khan Nin. There you have it, folks. He just kind of got busted. He seems to keep forgetting that when you have multiple blogs on WordPress, um, they will link together. Um, Excuse me. I'm going to go to his last blog that he wrote before he died. Big up Terry Joyce for this work. All right, it was uh, called uh, Clandestine Rage Revealed. It's time to talk. I want you to focus on the things that are right here, the tabs that you can click on to uh, contact Congress about MK Ultra disclaimer. Chris email, Chris journal, astrology, letter to the children, short super soldier rant, 
The Idlewell group is Michael Hemmingson, a child pornographer. The Idlewell group is Michael Hemmingson, a child pornographer. Michael Hemmingson is former White Hat and Lewis Conan, period. The blog post will be lengthy and may tax your patience. I will tie former White Hat, Lewis Conan, and Michael Hemmingson into one absolutely combustible firestorm before the time you finish this blog post. I'll examine the relationship of former White Hat. I, I will, I'll examine the relationship former White Hat has with Carrie Cassidy of Project Camelot. Then I'll examine a potential connection Michael Hemmingson has with the Super Soldier Summit. I'll ask the reader to examine why information from my personal emails and phone calls find their way onto the former White Hat's blog. Next, I'll examine how Michael Hemmingson from Revolution Radio interviews whistleblowers and disclosures and then defames and attempts to discredit them on his blog as former White Hat. I'll prove to the readers using Michael Hemmingson's own words how he likes to set up WordPress blogs to slam people. Finally, I'll examine the potential relationship Mr. Mike, Mr. Michael Hemmingson has with military intelligence agencies and family. The Temple of Set, a satanic organization. We'll take a look at the Idlewild. Very important. Remember the Temple of Set. You all know who Set is, right? From the Egypt, Egypt, Egyptology days. And Thomas Pynchon connections too. Based on my investigation into former White Hat, aka Michael Hemmingson, the questions which need answers answered are: one, why would Michael Hemmingson interview conspiracy di disclosers and whistleblowers on Revolution Radio, and then write humiliating and libelous posts about them on the former White Hat blog? Is this not a CIA Trojan horse tactic, pretend to respect the whistleblower, then trash them behind their backs to discredit them? Two, why would Revolution Radio allow Michael Hemmingson to interview whistleblowers on their network and then humiliate and libel the same people on his former White Hat blog? Does Revolution Radio know Michael Hemmingson is trashing their own interviewees and disclosures. Will Michael Hemmingson still be hosting Revolution Radio when the network learns of his deception? Why does Carrie Cassidy constantly give shout outs to former White Hat, AKA Michael Hemmingson? Carrie knows former White Hat is Michael Hemmingson. So why would Carrie allow Michael to sub for her on Revolution Radio if he's going to trash her and Camelot's whistleblowers. What connection does Project Camelot have to Michael Hemmingson? Why does Carrie Cassidy interview former insiders and whistleblowers on Project Camelot and then laugh about the libels, filth, and trash Michael writes about the people she interviews? Why would Carrie allow this? On several occasions, information from my personal phone calls and emails have been portrayed on the former White Hat blog. What connection does Michael Hemmingson have to the CIA and or military intelligence agencies to disclose information from my private phone calls? Michael Hemmingson, how does information from private conversations at a friend's house, a house I know to be bugged, a friend whose family worked for intelligence agencies at Groom Lake end up on my on your blog. We pulled the batteries from our cell phones and still multiple conversations between us have been portrayed in pictures and words on your former White Hat blog. How does information from an email about Chuck Norris, an email I wish I never received, an email I never shared with anybody, find its way onto your former White Hat blog? What connection does Michael Hemmingson have to Lorian Fenton, the producer of the Super Soldier Summit? Michael Hemmingson and Lorian Fenton were both sup supposed to be at the Alchemy event 2012. This is the this is the event I'm talking about. Oh no, 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 this is not the event. This this is what happened in Irvine, not uh Pahrump, Nevada. Or Henderson, Nevada. 
I'd say they're all reasonable questions so far, and I think they all deserve an answer. They all warrant an answer, certainly. So, let me go back. What connection does Michael Hemmingson have to Lorian Fenton, the producer of the Super Soldier Summit? Michael Hemmingson and Lorian Fenton were both supposed to be at the Alchemy event in 2012. That event took place in Irvine, California, and I do believe that um, that might have been the first uh, event that Stephen D. Kelly uh, spoke at or got launched at. Like Michael Hemmingson and Carrie Cassidy, Lorian Fenton has a show on Revolution Radio 2. Lorian and Michael were just on a show together in November. Michael's interviewed some of the super soldiers from the Super Soldier Summit, as well as others who didn't attend the summit. Does Lorian Fenton know Michael Hemmingson has tried to discredit the people she invited to the Super Soldier Summit with his former white hat blog? Does she care? Is Lorian an unsuspecting bystander in the twisted game of Michael's mind? Now, I believe that Super Soldier Summit that he's referring to that Michael Hemmingson was at is the one that took place in Henderson, Nevada. Note, I'm not attempting indictment on Carrie Cassidy, Lorian Fenton, or Revolution Radio. I'm trying to get some answers. It's the mission of the objectives investigator to get answers to the aforementioned questions. Michael Hemmingson and Lorian Fenton were at the Alchemy event 2012 in Ir Irvine, California. I got a message on my blog from the Idlewild group today. I was shown later in the post how Michael Hemmingson is behind the Idlewild group on WordPress. The Idlewild comment came from an IP address which traced back to Irvine, California. How perfect Michael was in Irvine. California for the Alchemy, Alchemy event, not in San Diego where he lives and the IP address usually trace, traces back to. So you can see where he shows who is M. Hemison. Is he the one called Reiki Meister or Rackmeister? Uh, the Idlewild Group WordPress, blah, blah, blah. Um, the Idlewild Group WordPress.com, clandestine range, uh, uh, un un unveiled Rackmeister. Nine eight one eight nine eight zero five eight. That's the IP address, and I guess you can see the IP address in here somewhere. Where is it? There it is. So it matches. That's where he's showing here that the it, the IP address was in Irvine from the Idlewild group. This screen capture is from Michael Hemmingson's Facebook. Michael posted this comment uh, in the About section of the Facebook page on March 6, 2012. With no coincidence even possible, this is the first day the former White Hat blog came online, Michael Hemmingson's former White Hat. And you can see that's his Facebook page, and it says, this is, this is a blog maintained by former White Hat operative, now with several dozens other defectors known as the brethren, brethren of the White Robe. Yeah, sounds overdramatic, but we dig on these names. I will post three screen captures of Carrie Cassidy giving props, in some cases a direct link to Michael Hemmingson's former White Hat blog. Why does she support the guy trashing and discrediting her own Project Camelot? Can you figure it all out? Does she have a choice? Has Project Camelot been pinched by the intelligence agencies? Carrie says FWH, former White Hat spoofs with a purpose in mind. This means she has to know who former White Hat has in order to know he is spoofing with specific intention. Former White Hat is Michael Hemmingson. The fact is, correction with the possible exception of Drake, are white hats or whistleblowers, I could say more, but that should cover it. Keep in mind, FWH, former white hat, is spoofing this sector and does this with a purpose in mind. Additional note, no doubt the government wants to keep Brock Brader on the run mentally and in the state of peer, fear. This suits their purpose. I stand by my original interview of him. I do not However, appreciate the lies and fabrications he has felt compelled to tell about me in Camelot since then. Although I totally get that he's being mind controlled along with several others that shall remain unnamed. 
it also makes total sense that Brock Brainer would wish to face charges and get his name cleared once and for all. For Good question would be, is there even such thing as white hats and black hats? Is this what actually occurring? Certainly smells fishy, but I can't say for sure. From what I know, he has a good case and should be successful in his assuming that PTB don't continue to twist the law to keep the manacles on him, maniacals on him mentally and emotionally. All right, I don't, uh, I really know a Brock Raider, but uh, as you can see from uh, the letter, uh, the email from Randy Moggins to Ben Duchesne's, he mentions, you know, switch out Brock Raider for James Caspalt, Michael Prince, and Chris Neal for Max Spears. And it's, you know, it's a round robin of blank, 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 you know, assets and CIA people. Apparently, Brock Raider was also some sort of a super soldier, and there was something going on with him. I, I, I don't know really exactly. But like I said, this was before my time at Revolution Radio. These purple screen captures are courtesy of Op Planet Radio. So Terry Joyce works at Revolution Radio, right? So that's where she's getting most of this from. Um, those other people, Michael Hemmingson, AKA Michael Aquino, and Kerry Cassidy being former employees of the same network, I presume. They are both from Carrie Cassidy's blog. She finds FWH amusing. Why? Off Planet Radio, what is uh, now again, is, is Randy Moggins' network. So this is how long Randy Moggins has been also associated with this, with, with all of this. March 23rd, 2012, Carrie back from travel. I'm, I'm now back in L.A., after traveling on a vacation down into the Tikal area in Belize, some relaxation and some challenging explorations. After hiking in the jungle, jungle canoeing down the Belize rivers and exploring the Mayan uh, ruins in, in Tikal on the spring equinox, I'm happy to be back in California. This was the first vacation I had in many years. No, in reference to the rumors, I was kidnapped. In fact, I'm alive and well, and, I'm, uh, and my webmaster, Tommy's Innocent, of all charges leveled by the former white hat, LOL. I have never been to Venezuela, yet, at least not in this life. March 7th, uh, new revelations on the real Carrie uh, Cassidy, LOL. It appears I lead a double life as a sex slave, CIA operative, white hat, and according to this, uh, new on the scene, self-described confessions of a former white hat operative. Uh, click here to read his disclosures. I have to say the descriptions of the various players are very creative and not bad in terms of typecasting. Now, now if I could just find my uh, two kids and husband, where where was it at? Oh yeah, the planet Procyon. I would be totally set. To the writer, I feel free feel free to connect me for an interview anytime. Now. Remember this word because this is going to come back later on down in the down in this article, his blog here. First, let's look at Michael Hemmingson's wiki bio, which can be found at uh, the WikiLeaks here. Michael Hemmingson's own bio says he writes under the pseudonym Louis Kahn Min. I'm not going to click on that right now, but I will source this article if you want to research more. I've actually looked at his WikiLeaks and it does say what he's saying. So if you want to just cross-reference what I'm saying, I'm going to source this material for you. Known pseudonyms, Louis Kahn Gabriel Kelgren, Kelly Green, John Shade, director of adult films. Hemmingson most likely has published genre work under other names. John Shade, you know. Guy. Not known at this time. I want to add Lu loose canon to the above pseudonyms. You will learn Michael Hemmingson is known as the loose canon. It should be mentioned both on his satire blogs that Louis Kahn Louis and a former white hat called themselves loose, loose cannons. Here is a link to an interview 
Michael Hemmingson was a part of. He admits writing erotica under different pseudonyms. Here is a portion of the interview. Now, all the smut I do is under half a dozen pen names. The only ones under my name are ebook reprints of Blue Moon, simply for money. So I have a buffer time to work on other things. I'm going to just kind of go on. He's just talking about quoting things that that um, Hemmingson is saying. Again, a screen capture from Amazon.com reveals Michael's own smut books by his name and his pen names. His list starts with Louis Kahn Men and then Michael Hemmingson and finishes with books to be authored <laughs> as Dr. Hemmingson. Basically, right here, he's saying how he was able to write more. The paragraph I, I skipped through, he talks about how he was able to write smut books much easier until Amazon caught on and kind of started to ban them. But here's some of the stuff. Wild and crazy fiction of postmodern lust and mania. The list includes The Perverts, Hot Load, Lust Planet. <coughs> Excuse me. Dr. Hemmings' Nifty Guide. All right. Next, let's take a look into Michael Hemmingson's past. Read the comment below, dated 2009, for further details. In the screenshot, Michael writes, I like to make fake WordPress blogs to slam people. WordPress has the best indexing with Google. His current fake WordPress accounts are the former White Hat WordPress.com, the Idlewild Group WordPress.com, and the Lewis... Uh, Con and men or press.com. Michael constantly brags about his old nickname, Loose Cannon. Lewis Con, men, and former White Hat both claim to be Loose Cannons. In this post, former White Hat shows an image often used for his pseudonym, Lewis Con Nen. Former White Hat, ha, Hat claims to be known as Loose Cannon in the agency. Here's a link to the Loose Cannon post by former White Hat. All right, here's where uh, he's exposing how um, Louis Conan is uh, writing a soft core porn uh, about MK Ultra assets. And this girl right here, this the, what he really did was he took stories of a real uh, whistleblower, a person who was on YouTube talking about these things, maybe it was interviewed on Revolution Radio, Took her, took an, an assimilated image of her, and and wrote pornography based on her per, her personal experience. Um, so uh, this is a my lab for written by uh, none other than Louis Conan, aka Michael Hemmingson. Why would Michael Hemmingson write smut about the same people he goes to conventions conventions to meet and interviews on the radio? It's called psyop, mind control, and deception. Let's explore. The potential connection Michael Hemmingson has to the Temple of Set, a satanic church known to have ties to the Illuminati and the CIA and military agencies, the Temple of Set has regularly been accused of being part of the MK Ultra and sexual abuse of children. Michael has co-authored a book with Don Webb, former grandmaster of the Temple of Set. This Amazon link will show the photo of the book which Michael Hemmingson co-authored with Don Webb. On Michael Hemmingson's Wikipedia page, you will see a mention of Don Webb. On Don Webb's Wikipedia page, you will see a mention of Michael Hemmingson, Peace in a Pod. This is the part where I, I have to remind the reader, Michael Hemmingson, as former White Hat, does blog posts based on information from personal email and phone calls. What connection does Michael Hemmingson have to the CIA or military intelligence to get the information to post on the former White Hat blog? Below is Michael Hemmingson writing about Don Webb, the former grandmaster of the Temple of Set. He speaks about Webb being a Setian, Setian referring, referring to the Temple of Set. The screenshot is from Michael Hemmingson's Facebook. He wrote about how gone left instead of right. Satanism is referred to as the left path. 
about Michael. Sometimes I think about my other lives in alternate universes where other choices were made, where I was turned to the right instead of the left when I said yes instead of no, and I loved instead of hated or should have hated instead of loved. Stay on that right hand path, people. It's all about being righteous humans. You know this. We're just going down the rabbit hole to see what it looks like. Professional writer, novelist, journalist, screenwriter, playwright, and essayist, Don Webb on the right. Michael co-authored a book with Don Webb. Don Webb Wright with Nicholas Schreck, Middle, and Zena Schreck uh, in 1999, Los Angeles Temple Upset Conclave. Okay, YouTube videos revealing the connection to Temple of, Temple of Set, a satanic church mind control CIA military intelligence. Click the photos below. I'm gonna I'm gonna click this video and let you listen to it because it's gonna it's gonna be here. You're gonna see where he reveals about Michael Aquino on his page. Intelligence agencies have infiltrated and created some satanic groups. With the resurgence of these groups beginning in 1966, particularly with the birth of the Church of Satan, founded by Anton LaVey. LaVey studied criminology in San Francisco and worked in the San Francisco Police Department Crime Lab. He also worked as an informant for Interpol. Prior to the Church of Satan, LaVey ran a group called the Magic Circle. LaVey's most famous associate is the National Security Agency General Michael Aquino. At the time of his membership in LaVey's group, Aquino was an army specialist in intelligence and psychological warfare. In 1973, he became the executive officer of the 306th Psychological Operations Battalion, contemporary with his founding of the Church of Set. General Michael Aquino wrote, From PSYOP to Mind War, The Psychology of Victory. Aquino's thesis stated that enemy populations could be subdued by inflicting a state of psychological terror and feelings of imminent destruction. He discusses the use of psychotronic weapons or electromagnetic weapons that influence the mind. Capitulation could be an if you haven't already, by the way, get yourselves downloading the EMF detector. There's an EMF detector on your app store. Go to app store right now. I use it myself. Click on EMF detector, walk around your house, have it switched on and go towards each of your electrical items. Like go to your smart TV, go to your computer. I guarantee you that's going to be going in the red zone and stuff. It's crazy, man. I might make a video where I screen share and just show you that. But yeah, they've been using electromagnetic frequencies for a long, long time. Induced without firing a shot by extremely low frequency signals piggybacked on broadcasts of radio, TV, or microwave communications in order to influence and manipulate the thoughts and feelings of the target population. During the 1960s, he was prominent in the Church of Satan and a close friend of Anton LaVey until he started his own Church of Set. A police intelligence report dated July 1st, 1981 reads, quote, The Church of Set is a group of hundreds of members that operates on a national level. Michael Aquino is the official head and, and rules through a council of nine who are in fact his lieutenants, unquote. At least two members of the Council of Nine at that time were members of Army Intelligence. In the late 1980s, Aquino was accused by the San Francisco Police Department of being involved in a satanic child molestation ring centered on the daycare at the Presidio military base where Aquino was stationed at the time. Probable victims numbered at 68, many of whom had contracted venereal disease. 22 families filed $66 million in claims against the Army, claiming that criminal charges against Michael Aquino were dropped due to pressure from the Army. General Aquino admitted to renting the German castle where the Nazi SS were formed and reenacting the secret ceremony among fellow intelligence officers dressed in full Nazi regalia. 
General Aquino is now the highest ranking officer in the National Security Agency, along with General Black and General Hayden. It is important to remember that General Aquino is first and foremost a military intelligence officer with over 40 years experience in counterinsurgency operations and an expert in psychological warfare. General Aquino's psychological warfare campaign has started or infiltrated cults and other closed systems as part of a concerted effort to control large numbers of people and to destabilize the centers of constitutional and legal authority, both here in the United States and in other nations. This methodology is part of a concerted plan that spans several generations. That's blood. That's the global currency, right? The Church of Satan and the Church of Set, as well as other cults and mainstream organizations, are closed systems with their own belief systems that are insular and separate from the reality that most people take for granted. These closed systems allow large numbers of people to be manipulated into performing antisocial acts that most members of the greater society would not contemplate. Aquino first participated in MKUltra-related activities in Vietnam as part of the Phoenix program in the 1960s. These ongoing MKUltra operations are functioning as a counterinsurgency and infiltration operation aimed at destabilizing like the thing they tell you is an eagle on the flag, which is actually a phoenix. Yeah, man. Stabilizing the United States and other industrialized nations. The following cults have been used by General Aquino or his associates to continue MKUltra operations outside of the laboratory. The mass suicides at Jonestown of 890 people had similar threads, a cult with sinister connections. Jim Jones, who had connections to the CIA, set up his utopian experiment on the same land the CIA had used to train mercenaries to fight in Angola. According to investigators, the Jonestown experiment okay, was conceived of by Dr. Uh, I'm also going to source this in the video for you can watch so you can watch later. It's very interesting. It goes all the way to Jim Jones. It goes into some other cult leaders, uh, for example, um, Manson, and it's a very uh, informative video. Uh, it was um, created by um, inf Infamous, and uh, they they have a channel on on youtube i actually subscribed to it today after watching it all right so i want to go into the idolo group here for a bit because that's also part of the chain of the domains that run between uh that ran between i don't know if they're still running but you know those the domains that are online are connected to the idolo group the idolo group by former white hat it has become apparent to me that i have that after I leave to hope and then 5D, there will still be much time here to do. My mission will be complete and I cannot remain, nor do I really want to. I have other matters to attend to. I have decided to form a team that will continue what I've been doing. I call this team the Idol Group, consisting of Pajarian, Subcommanders, Nellet, and Olean. Okay, and he goes on about all these different galactic things. And here's where it goes. He does the reference one loose cannon. I guess that's the inside joke. Uh, the Idlewell group, they will get the job done. So is the Idlewell group still working post Michael Hemmingson? And then some people think Michael Hemmingson really isn't dead either. So there's that theory. Please check out the screen capture about Michael Hemmingson and the Idlewell International Festival Cinema. Now, uh, how now we know where he gets his ridiculous Idaho Wild group idea. Um, and here's where in 2006, and he he did go to some sort of festival. Uh, I have some footage where there you can see a clip of him being interviewed. And I, I can't remember where I put it at at the moment, but I gotta I'll have to look it up. But there's him being interviewed on the red carpet about this movie that he wrote that was being featured at this that. I think we get the point. So that's pretty much the end of it, really. Um, you know? So what do you make of it? I mean, Max seemed very sincere to me. Everything he said seemed like, you know, legit. He didn't, he seemed to be speaking from the heart. 
And a lot of the stuff he talked about was about raising the human consciousness, keeping the vibration high um, and making sure we make the best of ourselves. You know, it was the people who surrounded himself with, with that um, made me ask questions. So this has been my investigation so far and I can continue it if you're enjoying it or I can move on to other topics. There's lots of stuff I'd like to look into. Um, let me know if you'd like, let, like me to look into any spin, anything specific. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Peace.